So you're thinking about heading out on a road trip. Are you starting to wonder what kind of clothing and toiletries you should bring with you? Stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to give you 13 items related to clothing and toiletries that you should pack for your next road trip. So I came up with each of these items based on a three week road trip that my husband and I just did through the American West. It's called the Great American West Pandemic Road Trip and we vlogged each and every day of that road trip. So link in the description if you're curious about seeing any of those travel vlogs. I also did another road trip essential video that's based more on the items that you need for your car. So check that video out below as well. So before we start talking about specific items, let's talk about the bag that you're gonna be storing everything in. Now there's all kinds of bags on the market, but the one that I really like is this Lululemon bag. It's a duffel bag and I really like it because it's made of a really sturdy material and it also is a 35 liter bag. For my packing style, 35 liters is approximately what I need to carry about a week's worth of clothing and toiletries. This bag also has extra goodies such as a laptop sleeve and several large compartments for storing all of your travel essentials. It also comes with a laundry bag, which is super handy. Something else that's helpful to have in addition to your main traveling bag are some packing cubes. These packing cubes not only help for compressing your items to fit better inside of your main travel bag or luggage, but they're also just great for organization. I always have one bag that's dedicated to my underwear and socks, another bag dedicated to shirts, and another bag dedicated to shorts. And that just makes it a lot easier to find what I'm looking for as I'm rummaging through my bags. So for the first item on our list, let's talk about clothing. Now the exact type of clothing you're gonna bring is obviously gonna depend on what kind of road trip you're doing and the particular destinations that you're gonna go to. Right now, we're still in the middle of the COVID pandemic, so a lot of road trips are based on nature, such as national parks, national forests, and outdoor adventures. So with that in mind, you definitely wanna bring some outdoor friendly shirts. And when it comes to outdoor clothing, the most important factor, in my opinion, is the material. Quick dry material is really great because it's ultra lightweight, doesn't produce a lot of lint, and it just feels really good in your skin. It's also wrinkle resistant, so it's the perfect fabric for traveling. Now there's lots of quick dry materials on the market. Most major athletic companies such as Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, all make some kind of quick dry material. But my absolute favorite quick dry material is made by Patagonia and it's called Capoline Cool. It's not super cheap, but it feels so good on your skin and it's super lightweight and it's just really great for traveling. It also comes in a variety of styles. You can get a long sleeve hoodie, you can get short sleeve t-shirts. There are all kinds of styles that they make with this fabric. So when you're choosing your shirts and clothing in general, try to think in layers because it's always a really good idea to layer your clothes whenever you need to add extra warmth. As for bottoms, I stick with long pants such as these tights that are really great for just walking around, hiking and lounging, as well as these golf shorts. So golf shorts are really great because they can look semi-formal. So if you need to be in a semi-formal environment, they work really, really well, but they're also made of this quick dry material. So you can hike with them, you can do all kinds of outdoor activities with them. So I really love the versatility of golf shorts. These in particular are made by Adidas and I like these shorts so much that I just bought a bunch of them all in the same style, just in different colors and brought them along with me for my road trip. So if you're mostly packing casual outdoor clothing, then you also wanna make sure to throw in something formal, such as a nice dress, a skirt, or if you're a guy, a long sleeve shirt that works really well with a nice pair of pants. And that's just nice to have because you never know if you're gonna run into a formal or semi-formal situation and you wanna be versatile enough to to have something to wear. Whenever possible, try to pick a dress or a nice shirt that is of a wrinkle-free material so that it's much easier to store. Next, let's talk about underwear. Similar to shirts and shorts, underwear is now made of quick dry material as well. And that's really nice, not only because things dry faster, but the material is so soft and it feels really good on your skin. My favorite underwear brand for panties and bras and even men's underwear is Ex Officio. And another reason why quick dry underwear is great is because it can double as a swimsuit if you're in a pinch. However, it's still a really great idea to bring a dedicated bathing suit or swimsuit with you, not only for swimming in lakes, rivers, and pools, but also for hot tubs or hot springs. And take my advice, if you can plan a trip around hot springs or hot tubs, be sure to do that. Your body will thank you. 
Next, socks. Be sure to bring lots of socks with you because there's nothing worse than having to wear dirty socks over and over again. So the best type of material for socks is merino wool. And if you think wool is just for keeping your feet warm, that's not the case. Merino wool is really good because it absorbs a lot of moisture. So all of that sweat that might accumulate on your feet over time is absorbed by the merino wool and your feet stay dry. It's just a really, really good feeling when you wear merino wool socks. There's a lot of sock brands out there such as Smart Wool and Icebreaker, and they come in a variety of cuts and styles. So you can get them cut really short for a sporty look or they can even be hiking socks. The next item to consider are sweaters and jackets. And this is important not only if you're heading to a colder destination, but even to a hot destination because a lot of hot places tend to use air conditioning a lot and that can really get to you over time. So be sure to pack maybe a fleece sweater or a sweatshirt and a nice packable rain jacket such as this Patagonia Houdini jacket, which I absolutely love just for hiking and walking through the city. And maybe even an additional layer in case you're gonna end up in a cold zone situation. So that concludes the clothing section of this Road Trip Essentials packing list. And at this point, you're probably wondering how many clothes should you bring with you? So my rule of thumb is I like to consider how long is my total trip? And I want to make sure to bring enough clothes to get me through at least half of that trip. At the halfway point, I do laundry. The best scenario is a laundromat in the hotel so that you can do the laundry yourself because that's a lot cheaper than paying a professional laundry service from a bigger hotel. The other thing you can do is try to find a laundromat in the local town or city that you're staying in. Just make sure that you have coins with you and you have some time so that you can stand guard as your clothes are being washed. Next, let's talk about a few extra travel accessories such as this hat, which is great not only for blocking the sun but also for blocking out a bad hair day. I always travel with at least two types of hats. One is a ball cap for my outdoorsy hikes and walks, and another is a nicer hat like this, which can complement a dress or a nice semi-formal outfit. And don't forget a neck gaiter or a face mask because we're still living in the time of COVID where we have to be covering our faces when we're in public most of the time. The nice thing about neck gaiters though is that they work as a face mask in most places where they require you to wear a face mask, but it also protects your neck from sun and cold and also insects. So this neck gaiter is made by Buff and I really like it because it has an insect shield built in. So it saved my neck multiple times whenever I've been swarmed by flies and mosquitoes while I'm out hiking on the trail. Another essential item is an eye mask. And this is really great for helping you get a good night's sleep. If you pair your eye mask with earplugs, you can get some of the best peaceful sleep that you've ever gotten. And this is especially helpful when you're traveling on the road because you have to get a quality night's sleep in order to function really well the next day and enjoy every day of your road trip. This is also essential if you end up in a really loud and noisy hotel like we did on the very first night of our pandemic road trip. Now let's talk about shoes. I usually travel with at least two pairs of shoes, sometimes three, whenever I'm on any trip. And my absolute favorite brand is this brand called Ultra. If you haven't tried Ultra shoes before, then you really should because they might change the way that you approach shoes and really enhance your travel experience because they just make walking so comfortable. There are two really great features about Ultra shoes. First is the zero drop technology. This encourages low impact landing with a bent knee and a soft foot strike, which ultimately means that your joints take less of a beating with every step that you take. Secondly, Ultra shoes come with a toe box that let your toes fully spread out and not be cramped up. This is essential for people like me that have wider feet, but even if you don't have wide feet, I still give Ultras a try because it's so nice to let your toes just spread out naturally and it allows you to walk for longer periods of time without feeling cramps in your feet or your knees or any parts of your legs. My favorite design at the moment is the Ultra Superior but I also have the Ultra Lone Peaks which I use for hiking. Next let's talk about toiletries starting with my toiletry bag. This is a toiletry bag by Sea to Summit and I love it because of how small and lightweight it is. There's not a lot of extra weight caused by the material which means that when you load it up with all the essentials that you need this still remains relatively small and lightweight. 
So after you unzip it, it unfolds like this and it has a hook for hanging from a hanger or a place in the bathroom. So the items in everyone's toiletry bags are probably gonna look a little different based on your hygiene preferences and the products that you like to use. For me, some of the essentials that I have to have are my contact lens solution and my contact lens holder. I also travel with a spare pair of brand new fresh contact lenses because there was one time I was on a trip where my contact lenses actually fell out and I didn't have backup. So I had to go two weeks just wearing my glasses, which wasn't very fun. Speaking of, don't forget to pack your glasses if you wear glasses. I also have a boar hair bristle brush. This is a mini version and it just makes my hair feel so good when I'm brushing it. So this is a little indulgent thing, but because it's so small, it actually fits inside of my toiletry kit. There's also toothpaste, dental floss, a toothbrush, one that folds so that it fits even better inside of my bag. These are also really great. These are the Cetus Summit Wilderness Wipes. And unlike Lysol or Clorox wipes, these are made to be used on your skin. So they don't have that stinging sensation when you're wiping your face or wiping off your legs. It's a really nice alternative to showers if you're going somewhere without running water or just for wiping down after a hot day on the trail or walking through town. They also come in a variety of sizes. These are the small ones, but they also come in, I think, a medium and a large size. If you're female, don't forget things like tampons and pads for that time of the month, just in case. And if you have prescription medications, be sure to bring those with you, as well as vitamins, airborne, anything to keep your immunity up as you're traveling. And the final little essentials in my toiletry kit are tweezers and a nice nail clipper, because you always wanna make sure to take care of those aspects of your hygiene as you're traveling. And there's nothing worse than using a cheap nail clipper to ruin your fingernails. So this is my main toiletry kit, but I also have another toiletry kit that's filled with my indulgent items. So I think that indulgent items are pretty essential to have, especially when you're on a longer trip, just to make you feel the comforts of home. Just make sure that your indulgent items are rather small or travel sized and they don't take up too much extra room. So the indulgent items for me that I really like to have when I'm traveling are my soaps. I really like this Maui Moisture Bamboo Fiber Conditioner and Shampoo. It just makes my hair feel so amazing and it's a lot better than those little travel size shampoo bottles that they give you in the hotels. I always feel like those are watered down and they're not the pure formula. So I've started traveling with my own hair products and it makes me feel so good when I'm traveling. Another thing is, you know, my St. Ives my face scrubbing um, soap that really makes me feel good after a hot messy day outside and yeah just some other little toiletry things that make me feel good while i'm traveling and related to those indulgent items are you know dry shampoo and also this uh, hair drying towel and these things i actually don't really consider indulgent i consider them essential because sometimes you can't always wash your hair so a dry shampoo is really nice just for keeping your hair semi-clean in between washes. Uh, this one, this Plump for Joy, is really nice. It's this orange mango scent and I find it tolerable because there are some dry shampoos out there that I just don't like because of the consistency and the smell, but this one is really, really good. I like this one a lot. And this hair drying towel is also really nice in case you end up somewhere without a hair dryer or with a hair dryer that is just subpar and actually ruining your hair. So this towel kind of acts as like a hood or a turban of sorts and it dries your hair out pretty fast and naturally without using a hair dryer. So this is really good if again you end up somewhere without a hair dryer and you need to dry your hair. So the final item on the list is a laundry bag and again I'm lucky because my Lululemon bag actually came with a laundry bag and it's the perfect size to hold about a week's worth of quick dry clothes after they've been dirty. So bring a laundry bag and also some mini laundry soaps dryer sheets and a clothing line because you just never know when you might have to make do and wash some of your clothes inside of your hotel room. But the best strategy is to plan your trip around a laundromat that's either in your hotel or near your hotel about the halfway point so that you can refresh all of your clothes. 
All right, and that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments below if there are any items that you would add to your road trip essential clothing or toiletry list. I'd love to hear your ideas. There's also a link in the description below to a downloadable PDF checklist of all the items that I mentioned and another video where I talk about road trip essentials for your car. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.